my name is chiranjeev sahu i hail from ostaram uh, a okay. village in uh, the coastal district of puri i completed my matriculation in two, 2014 and then joined bjb junior college and after that i pursued civil engineering in at nit raurkela good after yes sir after that i was in uh, job at lnt constructions and i served there for uh, mm. one and a half year and after that i quitted to prepare for civil services uh this is going to be your first interview chiranjeevi sir so in civil service opsc yes it is my first interview good and uh, chiranjeevi you worked with the uh, narson and tubro for more than a year can yes, you tell sir. us something about your ex experience there uh, Ch chiranjeevi so the project was basically keonjhar water supply project 3 and it aimed at uh, providing mm. uh, water supply as a part of jal jeevan mission and uh, in that i was assigned in uh, there were five blocks in the project i was assigned in the ghatagaon block and the major works were assigned to me that were erection of uh, esrs that is elevated storage reservoirs water tanks uh, there were 42 uh, water tanks to be erected in ghatagaon block and during my presence uh, 20 or 21 were in progress very good chandan ji that must have given you hands on experience and that yeah any any problems that you came across which were local or systemic problems that gave you an insight to the kind of uh, problem that could arise in future when you get into the service chandan ji in other words how was this exposure and experience useful and what are the takeaways if we can put it that way so in the job the major problem was uh, planning and coordination at the site there were 20 sites 20 sites under me and uh, uh, at the same time five or six sites were in progress so coordinating between different contractors and managing the material and uh, logistics that was a major challenge for me and i learned planning and coordination very well from there i uh, i i could uh, arrange and uh, manage uh, a number of manpower under me that is the first thing second thing is the climate uncertainty in construction work uh, in monsoon period basically the construction work halts so therefore we have to plan accordingly that is the second challenge and the third challenge was that uh, while laying up the pipeline in our project Uh, the land clearance uh, was a major issue because in monsoon the farmers would not allow us to uh, excavate the land uh, under their field and the second thing was that forest land the ghatgaon was basically a majorly a forest area so the obtaining the forest clearance beforehand before uh, laying up the pipeline that was the major challenge for me very good i think uh, as you rightly said the charanjeevi this planning coordination taking care of the contingencies so yes. these are the problems in the in the project implementation and this exposure and experience is going to stand you in a good stead when you step into the civil service and uh, uh, while coordinating and then identifying the problem and then getting over the problem so which quality in you according to you uh, came in handy to you and which proved useful in other words in coordination matters what are the essential qualities of a coordinator is it communication or uh, or trying to see their point of view what exactly so it is basically the uh, candid communication between uh, different stakeholders uh, and uh, majorly we have to ensure that uh, uh, a someone's uh, benefit should not affect others like uh, even if i am uh, giving it to some contractor then other should not be harmed so in that way yeah. the planning has to be ordered and uh, the, the very sequentially we have to plan beforehand most precisely we have to plan beforehand 
then only we can uh, the things will fall into the place so on spot okay. planning is not going to help at times but i think we also use the word candid communication did i hear you right uh, yes sir uh, yes sir okay. yes yeah. sir okay okay very good i mean basically when you say honest honest communication honest genuine honest. Good, good. Honesty is always the best policy, Charan yes, Devi. And uh, did you come across any red tapeism while coordinating? Uh, uh, was the red tapeism a problem? No, sir. Red, this... tape, red tapeism, I would not uh, say red tapeism was a problem. But uh, mm -hmm. in clearance of uh, the forest lands, the communication mm -hmm. between uh, the district administration and the uh, forest department uh, mm. That was uh, that might be posed some problem for us. Uh, okay. The lack of coordination between those two units, but I would not mm. uh, say the Tom rate tactician. Very good, very good. So on the same point, um, on the same issue, last point because I want some clarity, and therefore, in view of the insights uh, and the experience you have gained working there, uh, so. When you come into the civil service, do you think that that will help you uh, in in anticipating some issues and then be better prepared? The most certainly yes, sir. Because uh, in the private sector, uh, the uh, their efficiency, the managing and coordinating, team building spirit, uh, those qualities may, might give me an edge to me. And uh, more precisely, I will approach the problems of administration in a very systematic and objective way that I learned from the sites. And uh, the management and coordination is the primary key in administration that mm. uh, I would say LNT has helped me to learn that. Mm. Very good, Chiranjeevi. That while, uh, as we were discussing this issue, uh, you used to first candor and honesty and now objectivity. You use that word spontaneously. So objectivity is going to be a major, uh, uh, major plus point, isn't it? One has to be objective in uh, in assessment as well as dealing with the, this issue, isn't it? Yes, sir. Very good. Now, uh, Chiranjeevi, your uh, subject is civil engineer. I mean, civil engineering. Yes. And. Uh, uh, who is the civil engineer who was awarded the Bharat Ratna award? But if, if I can remember it properly, it, it is uh, M. Vishweshwaraya. Very good. You are absolutely right. And uh, any any contribution of Sir Vishweshwaraya in Varisa projects that you can think of, Chiranjeevi, civil engineering? Sir, Vishishwaraya's major contribution was in dam construction. In Karnataka, uh, there was a dam called uh, uh, Sravasti project. Vishishwaraya has major contribution in that. I'm not sure he might have contributed in Hirakud project, but I'm not sure about that. Okay, okay, okay. Very good. Can any particular aspect while uh, building these dams, uh, was there any, uh, any distinct contribution from Sir Visveswaraya, as a civil engineer, any any particular feature, uh, because we are told that his expertise as a civil engineer was availed of not only in our country, but elsewhere also. He was a consultant uh, in some foreign countries as well. I have no idea. But as a civil engineer, is there any particular feature in civil engineering or in building dams uh, that that he he patented or he uh, to to his particular expertise can be attributed. I am not sure about that. Uh, are, are you aware of any particular feature that he introduced in the in building dams, uh, uh, Charanjeevi? If you are aware, it's okay. But I am not very sure. Not not being a civil engineer myself, but I just wanted to know out of curiosity. No, sir. I'm, at this point, I'm on a No, no problem. No problem. Well, we can leave it there because uh, that's not very important. And uh, coming to talk about this Hirakud dam, dam, 
can you say something about the features of Hirokut Dam, uh, Charanjibi? So it is the longest earthen dam across the world. It is situated okay. on the Mahanadi River and it mm. checks the flow of Mahanadi River at uh, the border of Jharsuguda and Sambalpur. The project was uh, uh, started in uh, 1950s and mm. uh, uh, it is the major contributor for uh, hydroelectricity production for the mm. transmission in Western Odisha. Very good, very good, Chiranjeevi. Uh, now, talking about civil engineering, you know, as an ordinary citizen living in Odisha, um, Odisha is uh, uh, seismically vulnerable, uh, earthquake prone, and then in fact many of us felt uh, quite a uh, strong earthquake a few years back. So, taking this vulnerability into account, uh, what are the features you would uh, introduce to make a building, let us say a house, uh, earthquake uh, proof, so to say? I am using a layman's language. It may not be the appropriate language, but this is the point. Sir, in building to resist it from earthquake, for normal hmm. building, we follow Indian standard 456, IS 456, normally we follow. For earthquake resistant buildings, there are there is a there is another Indian standard IS code that is followed. So based on the earthquake zone where the building would be erected, so accordingly we can design the building as per the IS earthquake. IS I am not able to remember the IS code exactly, hmm. but uh, there is a certain okay. code. And and secondly, in buildings, uh, we can learn a best practice from uh, Burj Khalifa. Like they have implemented a damper, damper in the top of the building. So by using damper, uh, when the building oscillates, the damper oscillates to the other way, so that it minimizes the earthquake uh, effects. This, this, what is, is it? Is it an engineering structure? This damper? So, yes, sir. Damper is a, basically a mass suspended from the top of the building, and it is hmm. situated in the top of the building. So when the building oscillates this okay. way, the damper will oscillate to that way. So in that way, uh -huh. the uh, this minimizes the impact of earthquake. But the structure and dimensions of this uh, the structure will vary according to the uh, the the the, the uh, building itself, isn't it? I suppose. Yes, sir. No. Oh. Okay. Okay. So this is being used uh, 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 everywhere normally or. What sir, in Japan? sir, in Japan, they uh, they use uh, some different kind of material. Like even if uh, the material okay. is uh, falling down, then it co causes minimum risk. Okay, okay, but that may not be. Uh, it may not be suitable. Yes, sir. Perhaps it will be yes, there. And uh, now coming to uh, what we, what are the measures that we can take to see that the agricultural distress uh, is not there or in economic terms, how to double the income of the farmer. In other words, how to improve the lot of the Farmer or farmers is not a very happy lot. You will agree, Chiranjeevi. So, regarding cultural front. Yes. Sir, could you please repeat the question? Uh, the, there was a streaming issue. Yes, no, Sivanjavi, I was talking about the agricultural sector, agricultural sector being the prime sector in India and Orissa. Uh, yes, we, we have not seen any major reforms in the agricultural sector. Of course, three years back, we brought three new forms, but because of the farmers' protest, we had to repeal those farm laws. So the, it is a status quo prevailing in the agricultural sector, being the prime sector. 
so i was just asking uh, what are the steps that we can think of, of to prove the agricultural scenario sir so the uh, ashok dalwai committee in the last years they have talked volumes about doubling the farmers income so uh, majorly we have to address the issues one by one first coming to inputs uh, in inputs uh, there is land seeds fertilizer and uh, irrigation for so lands land reforms uh, la initiatives were taken but that hasn't been achieved to its full extent and uh, uh, for seed different missions are being taken like crri and uh, such initiatives high yield variety biotechnology application so by that we can manage with seeds and then for irrigation we ha we still have achieved only 50% of the area of india uh, irrigated and rest are majorly rain fed so so that is another challenge for us by intensifying the irrigation we can deal with the challenge and uh, we need to uh, diversify our crop pattern like we need to introduce more more and more millets because they are climate resistant and uh, less water guzzling and uh, we need to plan uh, accordingly because uh, we are cropping uh, the we are cropping the crops not according to its geographical requirement like uh, maharashtra which is a uh, drought prone area we are harvesting sugar cane out of that so the effective planning is to be required and by providing farmers with uh, schemes like uh, pm kisan uh, and a better availability of credit to the farmers the farmers distress might be dealt with when you are coming to the social media you know these days uh, uh, social media is very helpful in uh, in spreading awareness uh, communication a source of education sometimes it has its negative side also there's a lot of misleading information fake news false news leading to sometimes very very dangerous situation and creating social disharmony government thought of setting up a committee to go into with the fact checking unit which will go into the into the into the news fact check and then take uh, remedial measures but in the recent bombay high court ruling you would have noticed uh, the 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 latest ruling was that it it, it it is disproportionate and it is violative of the fundamental rights of freedom of expression so so there's a kind of a stalemate so in this kind of a scenario what would be your suggestion for via media how to control take care of the false and fake misleading information which can be harmful for social harmony and at the same time we do not stand in the way of freedom of expression which is very fundamental to democracy charanjeev so fake news and uh, those deep fakes uh, that have been arise due to the arrival of ai sir i would say those don't fall under uh, free speech and freedom of expression so to curb that we are not clearly overstating on the freedom of speech and expression government has uh, decided for a, a committee fact checking unit and there are other fact checkers too like uh, india today has its own fact checking unit and uh, other news paper platform so by uh, improvising them and by creating government's own fact checking unit we i don't think we are overstepping on freedom of speech and expression because that is necessary for a nation's consolidation and uh, promoting religious harmony and uh, uh, such kind of thing i agree with you sirajee but then the other side is sometimes the the government of the day where because when you are uh, phrasing it like this false and fake it's okay it's a black and white scenario but when you say misleading information that is a gray area rather vague and that in that vague area sometimes if this can be misused and a kind of authoritarianism could prevail 
and uh, even free expressions can be muzzled in the name of misleading information. So, so how, what, what is your response to that, Chiranjeevi? That the comedy that government is going, planning to make by giving it more autonomy and more powers, uh, the committee will not be subordinate to the government. By giving it more autonomy, the committee will be uh, able to function very independently and very uh, diligently. Wonderful. Well, so we stop there. Chiranjeevi, coming to the international scenario, so now it, it appears that Israel is uh, engaged in an all of war. And Israel is picking up one leader after another, wherever they are, whether it is Iran or elsewhere, they are going all out. And in the meantime, also 40, more than 40,000 people have been killed, a significant number being women and children. So where do you think we are heading, Chiranjeevi? the current geopolitical uh, situation is uh, worsening day by day and uh, the peace in middle east uh, there have been many efforts like abraham accord of usa but the peace is not uh, brought to the middle east because there are multiple stakeholders and uh, multiple interests being involved there i would say uh, the absence of uh, strong uh, global organizations like un unsc and the lack of coordination among them that is leading to such kind of war situation where the allegations on Israel that it is not following Geneva Convention and there has not been major criticism from major uh, global actors. So by strengthening the uh, global organizations like UN and minimizing the gaps between uh, the axis of uh, US and the axis of uh, Russia and China, by uh, minimizing the gap between them, we would be able to pro reach at some consensus and contain the uh, havoc that is happening due to the war. Good, uh, Chiranjeevi. But there is, a, in the same context, there is a criticism that uh, the United Nations organization has practically become dysfunctional and uh, it needs to be uh, reformed. Uh, would you agree that? Yes, sir, because the uh, UNSC Council, uh, the permanent members have been the same, the, the five that is from its very conception. Because uh, at the, While the uh, number of countries in the UN has uh, uh, risen from merely 50 at the time of its con conception to 193 today, the UNSC has not uh, been under any, any kind of reform. And secondly, the veto power that is being given to those permanent countries, uh, the veto needs to be revisited because the uh, newer actors are emerging like uh, the global south. It is not democratic, uh, the UNSC permanent five, it is not democratic. So on that angle, uh, reforms are required in the UN and UNSC. Very good. My final question will be, uh, Chiranjeevi, what are the strengths that you bring into the civil service when you get into the same? Chiranjeevi. Sir, I would say I value objectivity and efficiency as the most in a civil servant. So mm. I have learned it and I have applied it and I'm uh, believing that I will, I can use that in civil, sub, in civil service with quite efficient and objective manner. Thank you very much, Chiranjeevi. I think we can end it here unless you have any questions to ask. Do you have any questions, Chiranjeevi? No, sir. Thank you. Uh, my final um, suggestion, Chiranjeevi, would be in spite of all the preparations, there could be one or two questions, factual, which you may not be able to uh, respond to then and there. There you can simply smile and say, sorry, sir. I but I'll read upon that, sir. Thank you. And then move on because this is not a test of your knowledge. Basically, it's a test of your personality. So there's nothing to worry. And I think uh, you will do very well. All the best. God bless you, Chiranjeevi. Thank you. Bye.